Hi, grade students. So once again, this is Sir Ariel, your science teacher. So in this video, we're going to talk about the types of plate boundaries, the divergent, the convergent, and the transform fault boundary. So in this lesson, we have the following objectives. First, you have to identify and describe the different type of plate boundaries. Second, describe the movement in each type of plate boundary. And finally, explain the processes that occur along the divergent, convergent, and transform fault boundary. According to the plate tectonic theory, the Earth's outer shell is divided into several plates that glide over a semi-plastic layer in the upper mantle called the stenosphere. The interaction of these plates resulted in the different types of plate boundaries such as divergent, convergent, and transform fault boundaries. Then, what causes the movement of the plates? The plates move due to the convection currents within the mantle. How are convection currents formed? Convection currents are formed by the rising of the hot magma near the core towards the surface, while the cooler magma near the crust sinks, setting up a current that causes the plate to move. These currents are the primary driving force behind the plate movement. Are you familiar with the given geologic feature? Can you name it? Correct, it's a volcano. How about this one? You're right, it's a mountain ranges. And this one? Great, rift valley. And finally, the deepest part of the ocean. Very good, known as the oceanic trench. Did you know that this geologic event or geologic landforms are the results of the interaction among plates? These geologic events have great impact not only on the environment but also on us. Studying plate boundaries is important because along these boundaries, the formation of the lithosphere is happening. So join me as we discuss in details the different types of plate boundaries. There are three types of plate boundaries depending on the direction of movements of plates. First, we have divergent plate boundary, convergent plate boundary, and transform fault plate boundary. In divergent plate boundary, plates separate or move apart in opposite direction, creating a zone of tension. In convergent plate boundary, plates move toward each other. While in transform fault boundary, plates move horizontally past each other. Alright, so let's take a look at the given figure showing the relative motions of the crystal plates. So here, you will see arrows which indicate the direction of movements of plates. And the uh, plates are directed in different directions. So based from what I have presented a while ago about the three types of plates, so can you identify some plates uh, demonstrating convergent, divergent, or transform fault boundary? Um, so here, between the Pacific plate and the Antarctic plate, you will see the arrows are moving apart, which means the two plates diverge or moving away from each other. So the plate boundary exists is the divergent plate boundary. The same with the Antarctic plate and the Australian plate, the two plates diverge. However, here in the Philippine plate and the Eurasian Eurasia plate, the arrows are moving towards each other, which means the two plates converge, demonstrating convergent plate boundary. So here, between the Nazca plate and the Antarctic plate, if you will see the two plates are in the same direction, however, the edges are grinding or sliding past each other, creating transform fault boundary. So you will see class that there are different kind of plates boundaries in the different parts of the world. So it, it can be that in one uh, boundary, two plates converge and the other side plates diverge or the other plates undergo transform fault boundary. So the interaction of plates again creates a different geologic landforms or features and creates an impact 
not only in our environment but also on us. And so what happens along divergent plate boundaries? So you will see here in divergent plate boundaries, the two plates are moving apart or they diverge, the other term for moving apart. So as they split, it creates a gap in between them. So since there is a gap, it allows the material in the mantle or known as the magma to ooze up or to rise. So the magma will fill in the gaps and uh, this magma will slowly cool to form what we call the neo-oceanic floor. So most of the virgin plate boundaries are situated along underwater mountain ranges known as the oceanic reaches. And so one of the best known or the most studied example of the virgin plate boundary is what we call the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which can be found in Atlantic Ocean. So the Mid-Atlantic Ridge uh, splits the Atlantic Ocean from north to south. The spreading rate at these ridges may vary from 2 to 20 centimeters per year. Although it's a very slow process, divergence of plates ensures a continuous supply of new materials from the mantle. Um, this Mid-Atlantic Ocean Ridge is an example of the spreading center, which causes the divergence of the South American plate and the African plate. On the other hand, when the spreading center develops within the continent, the crust may break into several segments. The breaking leads to the formation of downfaulted valleys known as the reef valleys. It is also associated with the rising of hot materials in the magma from the mantle. The reef valley increases its length and depth as the spreading continues. At this point, the valley develops into a linear sea similar to the Red Sea today. Another example of the reef valley is known as the Suswa Reef Valley in Kenya. To summarize, here are the effects of the divergent plate boundaries. Volcanic activity that leads to the formation of oceanic ridges are known as the underwater mountain ranges. Creation of the new sea floor. Widening of the ocean basin. Formation of reef valley. And occurrence of earthquake. For convergent plate boundary, it can happen in the following. Convergence of oceanic plate in continental plate, convergence of two oceanic plates, or convergence of two continental plates. What will happen if a continental plate and an oceanic plate converge or collide? In the given diagram, it is clear that this event gives rise to the formation of volcanic arc near the edge of the continental leading plate. The reason for this is because the denser oceanic crust undergoes what we call subduction process or the bending of the crust towards the mantle. Since the mantle is hotter than the crust, the tendency is that the subducted crust melt forming magma. The addition of the volatile material such as water will cause the magma to become less dense. Hence, allowing it to rise and reach the crust once again, causing volcanic activities on the continental leading plate. For the oceanic crust, one important geologic feature is formed, and that is the trench, or known as the submarine valleys. Oceanic trenches are the deepest part of the ocean. One of the deepest is the Philippine Trench, with a depth of 10,540 meters. Another subsequent effect of the continuous grinding of the plates against each other is the occurrence of what we call the earthquake. The subduction of plate can cause the earthquakes at varying depths. So, the converging of continental plate in the oceanic plate may result the following. 1. Subduction process or the bending of the crust towards the mantle. The second, the formation of the oceanic trench for the deepest part of the ocean. Next, we have the formation of volcanic arc or the chain of volcanoes found on the continental crust and the occurrence of the earthquake. The other type of convergent plate boundary is the convergence of the oceanic plates. 
In the diagram, you will see plate A and plate B, and both plates are oceanic plates. So what's gonna happen if the two oceanic plates collide or move toward each other? Alright, so plate A undergoes subduction. Why? Even though both plates are oceanic plates, but they differ in terms of the density. The denser plate will be the one to undergo subduction process. So in this case, since plate A is denser than plate B, plate A subducts beneath plate B. The leading edge of the subducted plate will eventually reach the mantle, causing it to melt and turn into a magma. The molten material will rise to the surface, creating what we call volcanic island arc, which is parallel to the trench. Volcanic island arc is a chain of volcanoes positioned in an arc shape. Like the first type of convergent plate boundary, converging oceanic plates will cause formation of what we call oceanic trenches here. And these trenches will become the source of what we call the earthquakes. Underwater earthquakes, especially the stronger ones, can generate tsunamis, the Japanese term for the harbor wave. Tsunami is a series of ocean waves with a very long wavelengths, typically hundreds of kilometers, caused by a large-scale disturbance of the ocean. Many parts of the Philippines originated from oceanic-oceanic convergence. This resulted from the collision of the oceanic plates, with one of the plates diving under the other. Majority of the islands in the Philippine archipelago are considered as part of the Philippine Mobile Belt. These islands were formed 65 million years ago at the southern edge of the Philippine Sea Plate and are considered as the part of the island arcs. Other parts of the Philippines, such as Palawan, Mindoro, and Zamboanga Peninsula, are all highland sections of the Sandalan Block, the Eurasian Plate. The Philippine Mobile Belt eventually collided with the Sandalan Block, which explains the presence of trenches, such as the Manila Negros Cotabato Trench System and the Sulu Trench. The third type of convergent plate boundary is the convergence of two continental plates. When two continental plates converge, a collision zone is formed. Unlike the other two types of convergent boundaries, subduction ceases for this particular type of convergence. No trench, no volcano, and definitely no island arc are created during this process. Instead, what is created is a large group of tall mountains called the mountain ranges. During this process, shallow earthquakes also occur. About 40 to 50 million years ago, two large land masses, the India and the Eurasia, collided to begin the formation of the most visible product of plate tectonics. It's the Himalayas mountain. Since subduction is impossible between the two colliding continental plates, the pressure released by pushing the crust upward, forming the Himalayan peaks. So here's the Himalayan mountain, and this one is the Andes mountain ranges. So these two mountain ranges are the result of the continental and continental plate convergence. Here is the summary of the geologic features events that may form along the different type of convergent plate boundaries. For continental oceanic, we have subduction process, earthquakes, trenches, volcanoes. For oceanic oceanic, we have subduction process, trenches, volcanoes, underwater earthquakes, and tsunami. For continental continental convergence, we have mountain ranges and the occurrence of a shallow earthquake. The third type of plate boundary is known as the transform fault boundary. In the transform fault boundary, the two plates are sliding past each other. Since the two plates are grinding past each other, this can create a geologic event known as an earthquake. 
although most transform folds are located within the ocean basins, there are few that cut through the continental crust. An example of this is the San Andreas Fault. The immediate concerns about transform fault boundaries are earthquake activities triggered by the movements along the fault system. Thank you for watching. So if you have learned this video, kindly click the subscribe button so that you could be able to be updated with the latest video that I will upload. Thank you and have a nice day.